Mm-hmm. Good uh, afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. Um, and it is good to see all of you again. Today is the last teaching about uh, how to relax the mind uh, with this topic um, at this place until I think uh, next year, January 18th, 2020. Um, So, Uh, keep that in mind, January 18th, um, and uh, this is the, as I said, last teaching here um, with this topic, how to relax the mind. Uh, but so far, I taught you many, many different teachings and uh, gave you different instructions right, for your meditation about how to relax the mind, how to make your life meaningful, how to um, deal with difficult situations, and so on and so. Uh, So you have uh, a lot of uh, Dharma teachings and different instructions. Uh, So uh, um, that's very good because generally speaking, uh, for beginner uh, practitioners, uh, instructions and teachings, methods, all of this, very, very important because uh, um, they help to uh, relax the mind and um, get you there. Um, for beginner practitioners and uh, But uh, advanced practitioners don't uh, really need uh, different methods and instructions because once you uh, discover the uh, truth, uh, uh, then you can keep sort of return uh, directly when you sit in meditation rather than practicing some methods to get you there. Um, But um, whether you are a beginner or advanced practitioner, uh, you have received a lot of uh, teachings um, from me uh, during these years. So uh, that means now um, it is up to you and uh, it is your responsibility. And uh, I think uh, it is very important to make a good plan uh, for for the future, uh, because uh, most of you work very hard and uh, spend a lot of time and energy uh, at work, uh, so almost almost every single day and many hours, and uh, it's very difficult, right? Of course, it's very important uh, for you, but uh, uh, I really don't think it is a good idea for you to spend your whole life at work. Um, because I'm going to tell you this, there is an uh, eight years old man who uh, works uh, for the post office and he's still working there. Do you know why? Because uh, uh, he makes a lot of money. Um, But if you really think, what is the essence, right? What is the essence? Um, To me, like, um, it doesn't, makes sense. I think that's just too much. Uh, If you think about life, life is short, uh, so you have to do something good for uh, 
others um, and help them, people or whatever suffering, try to help them. That is the meaning of life. Um, at least uh, do something good for yourself. Means like, uh, you know, uh, take care of your mind, ordinary mind. So I really don't see a great benefit, uh, happiness or meaningful life, um, sort of meaningful essence from spend your whole life at work. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, uh, I don't see meaningful essence from it. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that's too much. And also some people are opposite of that, like, you know, they don't want to work at all. Um, uh, I don't think that's good either, right? So for ordinary people like us, uh, I think it's very difficult to survive uh, without worldly life uh, and without spiritual life. Uh, so I think we uh, need both of this. And I think we can have uh, both of them if we make a good plan. So you have to, I think, you know, uh, you have to make a good plan. Uh, for yourself, for the future. Um, and uh, in order to have a um, good spiritual life, first you have to uh, recognize that every human being has great uh, opportunities and great potential. Uh, but if you focus only worldly life, only worldly life, uh, like this 80 years old man, I think you are kind of wasting your uh, precious life and time and precious your, you know, your uh, opportunities. Of course, we all want uh, happiness. Um, uh, there is no different. Uh, happiness is everything. But uh, uh, we have no control of our mind. Um, that's why this, uh, this year we talk a lot about how to relax the mind, because we can't uh, relax our mind, right? Even though we're not trying to relax someone else's mind, we're trying to relax our mind, but still we can't control it. Uh, you might not like when I say uh, we don't have control, but we all need develop control uh, because we are too involved in the objects of attachment, anger, uh, and jealousy, right? Uh, and uh, from a Buddhist point of view, uh, that is an unhealthy mind because we are under the control of this fundamental um, cause of all problems. That's why what I mean, like we don't have control. So no matter uh, what do you think, you still need to know how to control and how to relax the ordinary mind. And you have to find uh, satisfaction and enjoyment. Uh, as you know, pleasure and satisfaction, all these uh, come from the mind. Ordinary beings are seeking uh, wealth, fame, uh, power, and pleasure. That's all. That's, that, that, is, that is like worldly life. Um, people like become famous, um, wealthy, and also people like, you know, um, powerful, all of that. Um, 
but uh, in the world today, um, I think there are many, many uh, ordinary beings who have those things, power, uh, wealth, uh, pleasure. Um, these, are the, these are the root of uh, the main thing that we, we usually talk about this Edwardly concerns. But I think these things, famous, become, you know, like fame, power, uh, pleasure, um, uh, and uh, wealth. So we should investigate those people actually who have these things. Are they really happy? Are they satisfied with what they have? Um, do they have really meaningful life? Uh, first, uh, first of all, you have to understand what is meaningful life, right? But we, we can investigate those things. Are they satisfied, especially like with what they have? So, you know, think about like that. What is the essence? Um, I always tell you, right, life is so precious. Very, very important. Very short, actually. Uh, so we have to um, enjoy and appreciate uh, every single day recognize that we have good opportunities, we have uh, good potential, we have great life. Uh, first, that, that is, I think, source of happiness, if you recognize that. Uh, you know, otherwise, we're never satisfied. Whatever we have, we, you know, like, you know, the, the Buddha said that no matter how much of something you get, it never satisfies you your uh, desire for better or more and more like that. So it's, I think it's so true. So we have this, uh, we know that, right? We never satisfied with what we have. We know that we have this experience. So it's, it's really true. Um, and then uh, we have no happiness because this unsatisfied, desire is suffering um, because it's 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 a uh, its nature is uh, emotional frustration mm -hmm. and it will cause all of the other negative emotions to arise desire attachment so then it's very difficult to have peace and uh, freedom in our mind. So uh, what I'm saying to you is that whatever makes you happy and gives you peace and freedom and make your life meaningful, that is what you need. That is what you need. Uh, whatever makes your mind frustrated, uh, disturbs its peace, uh, make it uh, restless, destroys your life, your view, um, or develops anger or attachment or desire, then it is suffering. That is what we don't need. So if you don't investigate in or in, don't investigate your again we're talking about how to relax the mind today so if we if you don't think about this kind of thing don't investigate your own mind and if you don't know if you don't investigate your your own mind, if you don't meditate, don't practice, uh, you don't know what you want, actually. Uh, then you will never know what is the best for you. Meditation or no meditation, uh, spend your whole life at work or not, uh, you never know what is the best for you. And also, without practice, uh, this is very important. As I said, you received a lot of teachings, instructions, even like from me, 
and of course also you received uh, these teachings and you know from other teachers right but like me you received a, a lot of pe uh, teachings and instructions but without practice no matter uh, how much you talk about your negative thoughts and emotions and how many teachings you receive uh, you will never really make your life better so the solution uh, to this problem is meditation uh, so like next time if you are emotionally upset check yourself check you know your mind check for yourself if you are capable of investigation instead of immediately acting you know means like right away angry or something and then if you have that power or capacity then you will find a wonderful experience from it and then you will learn something from your emotions from your unhappiness that that is i think very good because that is your wisdom uh, because our main problem is a lack of wisdom wisdom by the way wisdom is so important from buddhist point of view there is number one you have to develop wisdom first your uh, wisdom and awareness so if you investigate when you are emotionally upset if you have that capacity you will learn something from it um, that is your wisdom that is how you develop your wisdom so uh, meditation is not only the development of uh, uh, single pointed concentration but it is also development of wisdom and awareness that is the essence that is the point right uh, because through meditation you are aware of every moment of your daily life and that is the benefit and uh, it gives you the uh, uh, the the capability to act properly therefore when you understand your own mind you will discover the nature of your life and then you will be able to relax and enjoy instead of becoming restless and wasting your beautiful life and your great opportunities so uh, of course when you first uh, start meditating usually you don't really see anything changing because um, you are dealing with uh, powerful buddhist called habits okay emotions thoughts these are very powerful habit long time develop uh, but therefore you don't see right away you know like change it you know like if you're looking for positive change you don't see right away but if you continue to meditate then i would say maybe after three years if you're lucky maybe five years uh, you will see the benefits uh, you guys i know um, too much expectation uh, you don't see right away you can't find right away the benefit i'm a little bit but not much my life 30 years study buddhism first i was like 10 15 years nothing so uh, you have to sort of like uh practice continuously you know even though nothing you feel like nothing you you know nothing's changing you know 
but you have to just continue to practice. But you know, I see like I know uh, your meditation is working uh, because your life is getting better. I know that. Uh, uh, you are happier than a few years ago, uh, especially uh, when you sort of uh, encounter difficult situations. I know you handle them very, very well. That is, or as Buddhist practitioners, capacity, you know, do when you have problems, then you are different than just an ordinary person. <laughs> if you practice every day and when you have difficult, then you get angry. It's, it's like you act like ordinary person. What is the point? Your meditation. But I know you when you have difficult situation, you are very you handle them very well. So that shows, you know, that's a really good sign. It's really it's working, you know. So, you know, I am very proud of you. And you should be proud of yourself. And don't lose your enthusiasm. And I'm very happy for you because uh, um, this is working. And, and uh, you make uh, your life meaningful through meditation. And uh, you make also my life meaningful too. Because if you, uh, if you don't put my teachings into your practice, then whatever, you know, I taught, you know, uh, it's just a meaningless talk, right? It's just um, a bunch of, you know, this Buddhist information. Then, then there is no essence. Then just waste your time, waste my time. Uh, but uh, you are really taking the teachings, you know, seriously and meditate for every single day. So um, I think... Uh, you know, it's really good for you, and I'm ha very happy for you, and um, thank you for that, you know, uh, taking care of your life and uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, relax your mind and uh, find your happiness and your great path and all of that. So your your life is very meaningful now. And uh, um, with your meditation, uh, the positive changes will come, which is uh, an understanding of the mind, a mind that is capable of remaining totally in the present moment, you know. Believe me, now you, for instance, if you are a very new beginner practitioner, when you sit, try to meditate, you know, like even like one second, two seconds, it's just you, your mind all over, wonders way and lots of thoughts. But you have a mind that is capable, if you sort of practice, if you like, uh, you know, train your mind, uh, totally you can do that, totally like, you know, eventually, like, you can meditate uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, one day, without thoughts, without negative emotions, thoughts. Totally, like, you know, you, you can do that present moment. That's, that is amazing. That is amazing. And at that point, you know, your negative thoughts become fewer, um, less and your happiness increase. Happiness increase. So, uh, no doubt, you know, we are looking for happiness, right? So, happiness, uh, actually, your meditation, uh, if you meditate like that, if you relax, if you control your mind, your happiness increase. And then, relax your mind and enjoy day to day. Um, and once you commit yourself to practice and make it part of your daily life, and then meditation is not that difficult at all. The first time you feel like so hard, but it's not like that, you know, we, we have that capacity, you know, that's our nature, you know. So it is important to meditate regularly, even for a short period of time.
because as you become more sort of accustomed uh, to your meditation, you can learn more about your mind and how to relax. Ordinary people have no idea what is mind uh, because they never investigate. They, they never sort of try to meditate. Then you don't know exactly what is the experience. So if you learn more about your mind, um, then you know how to relax your mind. Then you know how to control your mind. Uh, but most of you know that, right? So if you are able to manage two sessions a day, I'm talking about meditation, try to, uh, try to, let's say like two sessions a day, try to have one in the morning and then other is uh, maybe in the evening. If you manage this, uh, you could eventually be... Uh, sitting for two hours daily for those people who have time. Uh, and, um, and also, uh, meditation is very important, right? So you need, like, your meditation, uh, time is important. Meditation, your meditation place is very important. So find a quiet play, uh, place and... Uh, uh, when you can sit without being like disturbed, you can make your meditation place beautiful and pleasant. Um, for example, you can put some uh, sort of paintings and statues and flowers, incense, candles, picture of masters, etc. Um, whatever you like to make your shrine beautiful uh, meditation place, uh, very pleasant, because this, uh, this kind of ritual object for offering, they sort of remind you of devotion and uh, uh, make you feel blessed uh, when you uh, see them and gives you sort of enthusiasm, you know, so you can transform the most ordinary of rooms into a great place uh, so that you enjoy your meditation every day. And uh, when you see, uh, you know, the uh, Tibetan, the, uh, if you go to Tibet, and uh, the Tibetan temples, uh, they're very pleasant, very pleasant, beautiful, and joyful. Uh, they, because they spend, they spend a lot of money, a lot of money for have a beautiful meditation shrine because it helps people enjoy their meditation. If you are not enjoying, when you see your cushion, oh, I don't want to meditate, that's not good, right? So you uh, kind of like, I want to meditate. So if you feel uh, not so interested, then you are going to uh, uh, lose uh, and you are not going to enjoy your meditation. And then eventually uh, you will have less and less and less desire to practice. That is the obstacle. And then um, that is not good. Then you cannot relax your mind. You cannot control your mind. You cannot liberate your life. So um, there are many ways of making the uh, approach to meditation as joyful as possible. Uh, that's, I think, very important. Just keep in mind. Um, and I think also self-acceptance is very important, which is learn to accept everything that is happening within the mind, all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the emotions. Um, it is like when you see a doctor, uh, the doctor has to accept all of your sickness, otherwise the doctor cannot help you. Uh, so without acceptance, then a good meditation is impossible. So if there is a no sort of inner acceptance, then there is a no 
basis for inner harmony and peace. So if you are learned to accept love and trust yourself, then you will have a great meditation. You can develop your meditation through sort of this, you know, self-acceptance, you know, never think, oh, I cannot do this. This is not my type. This is, I can do, that's not good. Whatever is like thoughts, emotions, it comes. You have to accept it rather than, you know, like see as enemies. That's not good. So you have to accept and love yourself, trust yourself, you know. Um, so that's very important. I'm talking about this kind of things because generally you don't have a lot of time to practice, right? Do you? You don't, I'm sure. You don't have a lot of time to practice. So you should find the best way to practice in order to become a, a, a stronger sort of practitioner. So I think, uh, you know, for you, sometimes uh, it would be um, important to go on a retreat for three or five days if you can. It's, this, this is another way you can practice, you know, uh, make your practice strong. And it will be very helpful either, you know, by yourself or with a, with, with a group, you know, group practice. The people like same, you know, you should find somebody uh, and then uh, go on a retreat for three days at least, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? And then you meditate, that's very good because usually you don't have a lot of time to practice. If you don't practice, you can't change anything. So um, um, keep in mind this basic sort of principles and you should try and see whether they're helpful or not. Um, so meditation is an individual thing. Uh, you should remember this Buddha himself said that um, I cannot wash away your negative emotions with water and uh, your suffering cannot be removed by my hand and I cannot transfer my, my realization to you the only way I can help you is through given teachings and you should strive, strive to meditate, uh, liberate yourself. You are the responsibility. You um, need to take care of your life. Uh, nobody can, even Buddha can't. So you can, only you can. So you don't have uh, to sort of, you know, like um, go somewhere to look for liberation. But when you rest in the present moment uh, with the recognition of the truth, without any sort of grasping, it is liberation. That is what we call liberation. Uh, liberation is beautiful word. <laughs> when I heard the word liberation uh, the first time from my mom, and I thought it meant after death, uh, you, uh, if you don't create or develop a lot of negative karma, then you go to a very special place that has everything, whatever you want. I thought that is what was meant by enlightenment. But I was so wrong and misunderstood about liberation because later I studied from my teachers and uh, from my meditation, I heard also this quote from the Buddha. I just told you. Then it gives me great uh, motivation to practice because uh, we can liberate ourselves through meditation. So liberation is in our hand. Uh, therefore, Meditation is important for all of us. Without meditation, no liberation, no enlightenment, no happiness, everlasting happiness. We have for sure like temporary happiness, but that temporary happiness is actually a source of suffering. Mm. 
So teachers said that uh, when you allow yourself to rest and sort of unconditional um, openness and use your mind to look into the true nature and recognize your awareness, then samsara, this world, this life, will be transformed right there, right there. So if you keep doing that, then your experience of life will change. You will realize your life is enlightenment and completely precious, precious. Therefore, I said, you have to recognize the preciousness of your life rather than blame every single day. That's why meditation helps you discover recognition and awareness of the preciousness of your life. And when you see the benefit of your meditation, you become very confident with your path. I think that is very important. After your realization, the practice is not about trying to see something that you have not already seen, but it's about awakened awareness and relaxing in that truth and being aware of whatever is arising in this very moment. Just to let everything be as it is, without sort of effortless, you know, or manipulation. And thoughts and feelings and emotions come and go. You know, you know that, right? So therefore, just to let them be. <coughs> this is the fundamental meditation method and instruction. Do you understand? Just because letting it be is the ultimate openness, uh, openness, you know. You rest in being awareness. You are resting as awareness itself. Like the sky, you are free of what passed through it. If you don't have attachment or aversion to your thoughts or your emotions, and if you just let them be, then it is like, then it is like a mirror. You are not disturbed by what is reflected in it. So my teachers say that um, when a wave appears, you should not see it as being any different from the ocean. Because it's just a manifestation of the ocean. What is different? Wave is water. Ocean is water. Wave comes from ocean dissolve into the ocean. What is the difference, right? Same as your thoughts and emotions come and go, arise and dissolve. So if you have attachment, strong attachment or aversion towards the emotions, feelings makes you miserable, suffering. If you recognize there's a manifestation of your true nature of life, or mind, nothing bothers you. You be more and more relaxed, open, precious, and happy. That's all the fundamental today's teaching, like, you know, how to relax your mind, okay? How to relax your mind. That's, you know, just to be like an ocean, like a sky. Free yourself. Now meditation time. 
Uh, so medit uh, this meditation is, as I said, recognize your thoughts and let them go. That is the topic. Recognize your thoughts, sometimes you call it emotions, and then let them go. In combination with your breath. So when you breathe in, pause and recognize whatever is happening in your mind. Okay? Maybe there is a thought. Maybe there is emotions. Maybe nothing. There is nothing. Who knows? Just look and see what is there. Breathe in, right? Then breathe out. And let it go. If there is something, let it go. Okay? Breathe in. Look. <laughs> not look means not me. <laughs> look into yourself, your mind. Your mind, not my mind. You cannot see my mind. <laughs> that would be very hard if that's the case, you know, like meditation. You cannot control my mind, but you can control your mind. Then breathe out, let it go. Then pause, if you want, pause on the spaciousness of your mind and your awareness, awareness, awareness for a moment, and then breathe in again, recognize. Do this over and over and over again, again. <laughs> breathe in, recognize. At the same time, relax in the openness, and breathe out, let of everything, let go of everything. So this combination, you know, like breathe in and out, it's each breath in is a reminder to recognize that you in the future you have to remember this. You know? Why? When it's the meditation is actually recognize your thoughts and let it go. That's it. But in combination with your breath. That means like when you breathe in, each breath in is a reminder to recognize, and each breath out is a reminder to let it go. Let go. So let your breath be a great sort of method to help you develop your concentration and relaxation. Because your breath is always with you, no matter what, right? So you remember that. So once you recognize when you, hey, I'm breathing in, I'm pausing, or I'm, I'm, I'm breathing out. If once, once you recognize that, that means you have to recognize what is going on? That helps a lot, you know? So this concentration and the relaxation. So breathe in, recognize. Breathe out, let go. Relax in the openness and enjoy. And then go back to breath. That's, that's, you have to just recognize, you know, your thoughts and let them go. Again, continue to meditate on it. That's, that's meditation, you know? As I said, you have to do this every single day, at least for three or five years, then you will see it. Then you can control your mind. So that's, that's your meditation. Do you understand? Yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Okay. <laughs> so that today is just, I'm um, Most of you know this meditation. You have done many times. And, and just the instruction, you know. This is like we're going to meditate for 10 minutes. That's not enough, but it's really good. It's good for nothing, you know. It's better than, uh, better than nothing. Uh, so you have to bring this back to your home with your life. Every single day you have to do this. Every single day. I mean, if you, if, if, if you want uh, happiness, 
genuine happiness or eventually attain in liberation, then you have to do this all the time. Once you control your mind, then we're going to practice like deeper and deeper and deeper. But this is like fundamental meditation, good for everybody who are Buddhist, who are not Buddhist, good for everybody, nothing different. You have a mind, I have a mind, what is different? And you can't control mind, I can't control my mind, what is different? So we need this method. These methods actually come from uh, these enlightened beings, the masters, great masters. They did not just uh, give us without uh, blessing, you know. They had this experience, oh, you have this problem, so you can, you can do this. So keep in their mind, okay? So meditate for 10 minutes, please.